All right, so another Pokemon theory. So there's another unused Pokemon called Trample. And I do believe that this Pokemon was also what they referred to in the original Gen 1. Like, if you remember Raichu's uh, Dexter entry, it stated that how it had enough electricity that it could feign a, an Indonesian elephant. Uh, something about that uh, Indonesian elephant. I believe that's what they were referring to as Trample. But the kind of ironic thing is Trample's a ground type. So it might not be affected by electricity. But who knows? Who knows? Um, there was also um, the idea that... It could have been referring to Goro Chu's Dexter, Dexter entry, that it has more electricity. It could literally faint a uh, or kill a, a trample. So that's that's something to think about. Really interesting. Um, but at the same time, though, who knows? So trample. That's not even what we're going to talk about. Like the uh, existence of trample. I think we're going to talk about how the. I think I know what they did with trample. Uh, and I can prove this. See, if you actually looked at, there's a video series on YouTube, again, not done by me, but done by somebody else, where they took all the missing no data and transferred it to generation two, and they actually got interesting results. Uh, you see, okay, I'll do the best I can to explain this, because missing no isn't necessarily 100% glitch data. There is still something there. Bear with me here, okay? So I have said before, and I think it's still proof that there are Generation 2 Pokemon. Their data was actually saved in Generation 1. However, though, it wasn't necessarily completed. However, though, but they, they finished it when they put Generation 2 on different cartridges. Now, the reason why this works the way it does is because... The Pokemon games were built on the same physics engine. The Game Boy games were. And so they transferred that data into... And, and here's where it gets even crazier. Even if you play Generation 1, like Pokemon Red and Yellow, or Pokemon Yellow, some of that missing no data that was found in Yellow was a bunch of Gen 2 Pokemon that were missing from... That, were, that weren't part of the previous 39 that were actually found in the Space World demo would later on be finalized and then... Uh, dragged over to um, Generation 2. So, Pokemon like Cinequil, uh, Typhlosion, Quilava, uh, Totodile, Fraligator, and, um, you know, and then you, you got it. You get the idea. So, I mean, and, and I know some people would probably ask, well, why is that? Why would incomplete data have anything to do in a game that it's not even they're not even in like why would generation two pokemon be in generation one if you know you couldn't access them and it's exactly that because pokemon has always been a series that has a lot of stuff stored in its data even if you can't access it it's saved on that hard drive because you think about it when pokemon was being created all the games were just they were just updating the uh, the game on a higher version so like pokemon yeah green was like pokemon 1.0 and then one like pokemon I, I mean the japanese version of pokemon uh red and green but then one like you had like the japanese version of blue red and uh, outside of japan um including the japanese version of pokemon blue it was like the 1.0 version and then later on when pokemon yellow came out 1.2 version you can kind of see what i'm getting at here that's why like you know if you uh do like the missing no glitch in the 1.1 version and compared to like the 1.2 version it's a lot harder to get rid of because they started realizing hey we're gonna patch this out because game freak knew what those missing those were they were other pokemon but it caused some weird effects because they uh did some crazy things so incomplete data caused glitches but it happened to be a useful glitch that manipulated your items and screwed up the hall of fame you know but that's what it that's what it was though it was trying to it was, uh, it didn't know where to draw the Pokemon at, so the game was causing all sorts of weird glitches. Um, just an unfinished uh, coding. But it was because of something else that was not there. At one point it was. It's because the missing no were actually Pokemon that should have been saved in that slot. So it's either, either there's a Pokemon in there, if you can't find it, it's a missing no. It's a placeholder, rather. And, and some other stuff, too. But they were actually complete data, so they moved that over. So, anyways, you you basically get that set. You get this idea. So basically, trample the elephant Pokemon in Generation One that was cut was actually eventually reused in a Generation Two. There's two Pokemon that actually were in the Space World demo that would later find their way into um, 
the uh, Generation 1. That, that should have been in Generation 1, but they were there. Uh, these Pokemon were Fanny and Dolphin. Dol I, I think that's how you say it. Uh, dolphin as in like the elephant that, you know, has the, it, it rolls up in a ball and all that. Like a roll out and all that. So I wouldn't be surprised in the slightest that that's what they decided to do with that Pokemon. Because again, it was in Generation 2 and it was one of the first Generation 2. So yeah, basically it goes without saying because, I mean, even uh, Trample was a ground type. And then uh, Dolphin was supposed to be a Dolphin too. Um, maybe you know uh, they just redesigned it and then they gave it a pre-evolved evolution because again Gen 2 was supposed to have tons of baby Pokemon. I've even stated before that Pokemon, and this is a whole other video by the way, uh, Pokemon could have had at least 300 designs by Gen 1 but they decided to narrow it down and then make a sequel to it because that way they had extra content to go off of. Mine as well. But then over time they started writing even more ideas and then that stuff got scrapped because of cartridge limitations. When Generation 3 came out, they weren't having uh, cartridge limitation problems anymore. But at the same time, though, not only did they start getting better at programming and coding, they also got better at understanding, you know, how technology has evolved. So now they were able to make even more advanced games, like, you know, like the gimmick Game Boy Advance. So, you know, they started learning from their experiences. And because they've already made two series so far, they basically were like, okay, you know, what do we what do we do with this series? You can really see how Generation 2, like, was a lot different than Game Boy Color games. Especially at the time of its uh, creation. So anyways, this is what I found out. I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, just like a lot of other Pokemon, um, the better question is, at this point, we have to really think, what Pokemon could we really anal and, uh, and analyze that could actually be a part of that uh, Pokemon group that was part of the 300. So, like, I mean, I think, like, they had 191 Pokemon at one point, including when Mew eventually replaced um, Omega. But then you had, like, a bunch of Pokemon that were scrapped, like 40 Pokemon. But then they still had, like, the leftover 109 Pokemon. So, because, you know, like, you have 191 Pokemon. The 151 plus 40 Pokemon that were missing now that we originally knew of in a prototype, and there's probably even more of them. But then it's like, now you're still left with 109, 110 Pokemon. And it's like, you start thinking like, well, we, we know of 191 of them at the moment, or 186 of them. But now the question really becomes, which Pokemon, you know, is it quite possible that those 100 Pokemon would eventually be the 100 Pokemon that were actually found in the... Um, like, I know this might confuse some people right away because you're talking about they had this idea probably for a while, but it wasn't programmed until, like, a while. But, like, uh, some of those Pokemon could have been the 100 that were actually supposed to be in Generation 2. Even though, ironically, like, most of them wouldn't be in the 1997 Space World demo, it would carry over, and then they would start writing a bunch of other ideas. Because, you know, because here's what's crazy to think about. You had... They stayed in, and Game Freak being they, because this is going to get really, really vague, but it's it's true. A lot of these Pokemon, you're going to notice a real obvious pattern. A lot of these ideas, they're going to be like, they'll, they'll have the idea at some point, then they'll put it in the game at some point. And then they'll do either two, one or two things. They'll either recycle it, delay it, or scrap it all together. But we have seen Pokemon in the 1997 Space World demo, for example, that would later be in Generation 4 couple examples, Tanga Growth and um, and uh, Leafeon, for example. So imagine having Leafeon in Generation th in Generation 2. That would have been very interesting. Um, it would have also, like, you know, because Celebi wasn't in the game yet, but Celebi could have been an idea, part of those 300 Pokemon. And then when Generation 2 came out, within that course, another 300 Pokemon were born. So they had, uh, like, 600-something Pokemon that could have possibly have been in that game. Now, we're going to start talking about uh, Generation 2 prototype data. Like, once I basically feel like I've covered, like, a lot of stuff with Generation 1. Because I don't feel like too many people are covering Generation 1. So that's kind of why I've jumped to this conclusion. Because I, I know a lot of stuff. I've seen a lot of stuff. So I think I'd give my two cents on the whole thing. But I wouldn't be surprised if... Over the series, over the course of the series, we have learned that there are a ton of ideas that have been scrapped, but at the same time, a ton of those Pokemon had been reworked into something else, or better yet, maybe just delayed for a while. But it is needless to say, 
how many ideas they've had, how many ideas they've changed. It just, it's, it's remarkable to think like how a series like Pokemon really came to be what it was and how much different would it have been if, if they would have just kept it the way they wanted to, you know, like not cartridge limitations. Would they have still made games after Gen 2 if, you know, I, I honestly think they still would have. They would probably, we probably would have had even more Pokemon. Like, again, I can only imagine what Gen Generation 3 would have looked like. You know, like, I mean, I'll, I'll tell you this for a fact, if you didn't know this. If you look at some of the beta Pokemon in Generation 3, uh, you'll you'll notice how Torchic looks completely different. It looks even more adorable, if you ask me. Um, you'll also see, um, you would also be able to see, um, like, Blaziken. There was, like, a Pokemon that looked like Blaziken and Latias at the same time. And, and, it, and it's really interesting because it, it sounds weird, but it's, like, when you see it, it's, like, it's got, like, Blaziken's face, but it's got, like, Latias's wings and all that. So it kind of makes you wonder, you know, what happened to Latios, you know? And maybe Latios wasn't an idea yet until they decided to craft that, you know? It's, it's just interesting to think, like, you know, how many Pokemon were different? It's like some of those ROM hacks people make, you know, the Pokemon fusions and all that. Just, it's crazy, man. You know, even though Blaziken and Latias are two different Pokemon entirely. And, um, it, it just somehow finds a way to work, though, when you really look into it. I just think it's really crazy how they, how they, like, came up with the series. But I can only begin to understand, like, how many hours, like, like this, and this is something that only like Satoshi Tajiri and the people that have been there with him, like you know, Game Freak's little secrets, what the, the the history they've had there. You know, I can only imagine what they've been through, how they've done it, and where it ultimately led them in the long run. So Pokemon like Trample and Pokemon like Dolphin and uh, Fanny and I, I wouldn't be surprised that you know a lot again a lot of ideas were reused at some point. It seems like we were kind of right for the most part that most of the generation one pokemon were supposed to be in generation two so i wouldn't be surprised in the slightest i wouldn't be surprised in the slightest because most of the pokemon that were actually later on that replaced them were actually in the space world demo aside from lugia and i mean i wouldn't be surprised that's proof in and of itself that lugia was supposed to be in generation one because all the trade back missing knows that they've done when they put it in Gen 2, one of them came out to Lugia's data. Now, why was Lugia's data in Generation 1? And Lugia was nowhere to be found. I'll tell you why. Same reason with Celebi. Even though Celebi wasn't in Generation 1, but that Pokemon wasn't supposed to be... Like, they had that as an idea, but they weren't using it. Like, there was a cutoff date for it. We're going to take these Pokemon and carry them over to the next game. That would explain why they made a sequel to Generation 1. That would explain why, if you play Generation 2 and Generation 1, you will see why there's a lot of differences in between. But ultimately, in the end, you will ultimately see why those games really do make a lot of sense when you say that they do take place three years in between. You know, you're talking when you play Generation 1, you see the story of Red unfolding. And then, you know, you, you're, you're there with them in the meantime... Because you are red. You are the, you know, going through the Elite Four. And then, you know, you, you like, squish your rival right into the ground once you uh, basically uh, make him come to the realization that, you know, he's not going to be able to defeat you. And, you know, you send him back to uh, back to trainer school, basically, after he came comes to the realization that his, his whole champion's uh, uh, regime is over. <laughs> well, because, you know... Red, what was, what was it? Red was, uh, like in Generation 2, I mean, you know, blue or green, whatever you want to call them. I think I just go by green. You know, he comes to the realization that, you know, he's sitting there, uh, because he's the 8th gym leader at this point, uh, where Giovanni should have been. Um, well, in the final version, that's in the canon region, what we understand. Um, that's not how it was supposed to be in the Space World demo, by the way. It was completely different. Um, but what happened was, you know, when they redid all that, um, you know, blue, uh, green and blue were, uh, were there and green, blue, uh, what, what happened was, you know, he was sitting there dwelling over what happened to Cinnabar Island, but then, you know, after you decide to beat him, he talks about how, you know, there was a, um, like year, uh, like how, how when, once him and red came in contact with each other, you know, they always had this like uh, friendly rivalhood, but then it's like, you know, once red got so good, you know, nobody came close to even beating him. Like everybody else had a lot of catch up to do before they even came close to on the skill level red was because 
One is Pokemon were way too strong. And it just, you know, you could basically wipe out, if I remember correctly, I think even, uh, you know, even even just as Charizard and Blastoise, because I know it's Blizzard, could take like half of, um, so yeah, I wouldn't be surprised in the slightest, but once again, you know, if anybody, come, if I come across anything, I'll make a video about it. And as of right now, I will leave it off to this. You know, if you're not subscribed to this channel, please subscribe. I will be looking into this a little bit more. And I hope you find more stuff. Um, we're almost to a thousand subscribers, so that's cool. Again, you know, if you like this channel, please support it. If you want to support me on Patreon, you can. You don't have to if you don't want to, though. And just have a great day, and I will be around.